Am I live? What's going on, folks? We're started. I'm trying to find my pin here. My 05 pin. Here we go. This one should be good, hopefully. Let's see. Um, feels good, I think. All right. And we get a white pin, too. Let's see. Sorry, folks. I'm a little late here starting. Had some uh, exciting things happening today. Really exciting day. But uh, anyway, let's... Um, yeah, let's get let's get started. Everybody, can everybody hear me? Uh, it's seven <laughs> ten. Actually, it's five ten. Depends on where you are in the world. For some people, it's already tomorrow. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, it's called time zones. You ever heard of them? Truth, freedom. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the world does not revolve around you. Believe it or not, I know it's hard to believe. But it's true. The world revolves around aliens uh, in the center of the earth. Uh, anyway, uh, <laughs> what's going on, folks? What's going on? What's going on? We're going to draw some. Uh, so this is like an overcast drawing, but um, I don't know. Let's let's figure. Let's just we'll we'll figure it out as I go along. Try to make this good. You guys know how I like to sketch, so we'll just keep it keep it sketchy today. So I'm going to modify the photo a bit. So there's a lot of background trees and stuff. I'm going to bring those down a bit, uh, at least on one side, because I want more of the church, more of this old church to really shine, really show through. All right, stop talking, Brandon. Let's just do this. Let's just do this. America. <laughs> the world revolves around America. Pretty much, I guess. It's what Americans think. All right, let's figure out. All right, so I think I'm seeing the top of this thing, like right here. I'm trying to visualize seeing it already down on the paper. Let's see, this church is probably... Yep, it's a square. It's pretty much a square. So from here to the top of that, boom, that's the width. So let's mark that. Let's double check that. One more time. Boom. Oh, I just lost it. I'm dumb. Boom. Okay. Now we got the proportions pretty much, hopefully. America is beautiful. Yeah, for sure. It's definitely beautiful. I'm not saying it's not. But so is, I think Earth is beautiful. You know what I'm saying? I think Earth is quite beautiful. Let's zoom this in a bit for you folks. Maybe bring it down a notch or two. Yeah, right there. That's probably good. How's it going, Pierre? What's happening? 2.13 2 a.m. where you are. Where are you at? Where's everybody from? I always like seeing where everybody's from. It's always cool. I'm in Northern California at the moment. <laughs> at the moment, like I'm going to teleport somewhere else. Yeah, I'd love, love to hear where everybody else is from. Do I also join drawing contest? Uh, I did. I have in the past, but I really haven't lately at all. Um, I kind of just focus on my YouTube and focus on my business and stuff. I don't really do a lot of contests anymore. I probably should, but just not uh, not that interested. A lot of the times they make you um, they make you pay to join. You know, it costs money, and then I never end up winning. It's always because the contest, it's always subjective, and it always I just get annoyed with <laughs> with contests. Uh, it's three in Turkey, North Carolina, Turkey, Colorado, England, Connecticut, Serbia. Wow. Really cool. Anybody in Asia anywhere? Looks like, so we got kind of Middle East, East European. 
European, we got England, got America. Brazilian born, living in Texas, that's cool. Texas is pretty nice, I guess. <laughs> I guess. No, Texas is nice. Some areas of Texas. So let's see, we got over here. So I'm just trying to figure out this roof. Let's keep it quick. So this other tree is about the same height. Goes down. Little triangular thing. It's kind of cool. Some other trees here. Let's keep this flowing. We got, let's see, coming from the top of this tree. Little entrance things. Boom. So just paying attention to location of these compared to this building that I have planned out. Got some nice church windows. This is a beautiful little church. Um, I think it was originally built, if I'm not mistaken, in 1400s. It's either the 1600s or the 1400s. Uh, but I believe the original structure, this actual spire was a little bit different originally. This tower. Um, different than it is nowadays. But this is in uh, England. What's the name of the town? Uh, it's where Jane Austen, one of her towns where she grew up. Uh, Chawton, I believe, maybe? Or is it? No, no, no. Ah, uh, I can't remember. Yeah, Chawton, Chawton. Really cool little village, man. It's like basically one street. And uh, she went to this church as a kid. Jane Austen is a writer, of course. Most Most women probably know who she is, who she was. But this is a beautiful little church, really cool. A lot of interesting architecture on the windows and stuff. Um, I th a lot of it seemed very symbolic, but I didn't really understand a lot of it. A lot of the windows at the top, some of them had like triangular sections and then some had five sections, like a, like a pentagram, pentagonal shape. And I was like, huh, there's got to be, you know, I, I paid attention a, a lot to... Um, if anybody knows anything about like sacred geometry and you look at the cathedrals, all the old cathedrals in Europe, there's a lot of meaning behind a lot of the stuff that they, uh, that they built. It's very interesting, very interesting stuff to me. And, uh, yeah, I was wondering what the meaning was, uh, with this particular structure. This thing's way too wide. I'm sure everybody's in the comments is telling me that, but, uh, so we got some, somebody from Pakistan. Is that picture available online? No, it is not. This is a personal picture that was taken from one of my trips, uh, Vancouver Island, Canada. That's pretty cool. I've been to Vancouver Island when I was like seven or something. I went there in 96, I think, or 97 when I was young. I wish I could go back there. Wish I could go everywhere, but uh, Texas, nor Northern California here too. <laughs> ah, you're funny. You're funny. Uh, somebody from the Philippines, Texas, Massachusetts. Did I take the pick? Yes, I did. British Columbia, Dubai. Wow, man. People from everywhere. Really cool. All right, so I think I fixed the tower there. It looks much better, I think. Um, <laughs> Oh, man. That cracked me up. That was funny. Make me... Make me laugh. Make me smile. Okay. Let's see. Boom. Got some other... Other structures here and then trees. Let's try to sketch this a little quicker. I'm not going to worry about what's over there. 
So we got little trees here. And this is where I'm gonna, see there's background trees way up here. I think I'm gonna keep those out because I like the tower kind of sticking out and I wanna do white pin for the sky. So I'm gonna do trees a bit lower here. Keep them underneath here. Just try to keep this flowing, pretty flowy. Maybe bring them up a little bit towards the edges. And then I think I'm gonna start the trees right over here on this roof. And make these a little taller over on this side as well. So that we're kind of getting this convergence toward the center. Maybe even bring this up more. Creating these diagonals, so it's kind of this reverse triangle. I don't know, just kind of making it up. But, um. You know, I'm not gonna get too detailed here with the trees and stuff. It's just gonna be value. There's gonna be some value and some crazy organic kind of shapes amongst the structural shapes. So I kind of like that. I kind of like the contrast. This is all dark under here, of course. And uh, something that could be cool is let's see, how could I Let's just make like a diagonal going across the foreground or something. And that's just kind of a lead in. You know, I can even have one coming across this way as well. So just kind of lead you in, boom. Diagonals in a, in a composition like this, diagonals create movement. Um, so if you think about certain paintings and stuff that have a lot of horizontals, if everything is horizontal, it's very calm, very calming. But if you have diagonals, those those create movement within a, a scene. So we have a, a subtle diagonal here, we have this diagonal and this opposing diagonal. It creates a lot of movement, as you can see, kind of draws you in. Um, yeah, I don't know, just making that up, of course. Just, I don't know, just having some fun. Try not to get too I always realize I need to start working more on my composition and stuff. So, because it's not always about just copying a photo, you know. I watched a um, watercolor DVD earlier today and I wish I was doing watercolor today because I got really inspired to do some watercolor. But, uh, I think it's helping the sketch as well, just kind of loosen up and get sketchy with it. I'm going to lighten this up now because I'm going to go into the inking process. Algeria, okay, we've got someone in, uh, I believe that's in Africa, correct? Northern Africa? It's pretty cool. Be interesting to visit Algeria. I believe I've, I believe I've talked to somebody from there in the past. Can't remember though. I've talked to a lot of people from different places over the years, so it's hard to keep up with where everybody is from. But yeah, I think I remember somebody commenting on my videos saying they're from Algeria. I remember seeing that? You might have been it. Um, uh, my studio? What do you mean by your studio, Umi? Which UMI? What's your question? <clears throat> Puerto Rico, India. I had an, had an instructor say that photographs lie. Yeah, they kind of do. Um, which watercolor DVD? Uh, I have a lot of DVDs, a lot of the uh, Joseph Sabukovic uh, DVDs, and I have a lot of the Alvaro Castanet, Castanet DVDs. Probably two of my favorite watercolor artists, so Joseph Sabukovic. Um, his is really good. I have a bunch of those. Um, are you doing this in black and white? Uh, yeah. I don't have any color ink, so. Have I ever tried gouache? Well, let me show you real quick. I have some gouache studies right here, actually. Um, these are the gouache that I've done. So just little landscape studies on some toned paper. And I'm, I'm thinking about, maybe we should do some of these uh, in the future. Um, Cause I have a whole stack here. 
Oh, excuse me, folks. I have a whole stack here of this toned paper that's much thicker than normal paper. Um, this is uh, 184 pound toned paper. And uh, this drawing paper that I'm sketching on, this is only like 80 pound or 90 pound or something like that, I can't remember. But this paper is much thicker, so you, I'm able to do gouache on it. So these are my gouache studies uh, that I've done. So that's a jellyfish. I did some for like Inktober. I did a lot of value studies. That's probably one of my favorites. And not that good. Really love this one for all the texture, the dry brushing. I really like getting texture, I've realized. Um, it's a lot of fun. So yeah, I just have a bunch of gouache gouache studies. So hope you enjoyed seeing those. That's kind of the extent of gouache that I've done. But I don't do it too often. Do you have a Twitch account we can follow? Not yet. Not yet. I'm thinking about I'm thinking about it. All right, so let's see if I can keep this pen sketch pretty loose. This 05 pen does not feel right. It feels like a bad one. Um, just give me one second here, folks. Got to find. Got a whole bunch of these 05s, but I know one of them is dead, so that might have been it. Yeah, this one feels much smoother. Let me zoom this in for you guys, sorry. Uh, thanks, I appreciate it. Uh, I do have an Instagram, it's at Schaefer Art. If you look in the top, uh, top left corner of this video, this live stream video, that's my my tag at Schaefer Art, so you can find me on Instagram through there. There's probably a link in the description as well to my Instagram. So always check the description. There's a ton of links in there, of course. Yeah, pens definitely don't last long. I know that. That's why I bought a five pack of these uh, 05 pens, so I have a whole bunch. So. I stock, stocked up on these because these are my favorite ones. The 05, five millimeter, whatever. So I'm just trying to keep this pretty loose so far. It'll all come together. The more I, the more I put down, the more I draw on this, uh, particular drawing, the more it'll come come to life. So I kinda I kinda want to have this to have some energy, so you see I'm just breaking some of the edges there. Having some fun. Gives us gives a little bit of life, a little bit of energy. Let's do the same with these these trees here. Try to keep it pretty flowing. Cause this is the fun part, all these trees, but I don't want to get I don't want it to be too chaotic, too wild. Just wild enough to contrast kind of the very straight lines of this of these buildings. And I'm going to come back, I'll add a bunch of value and stuff to these, these trees, of course. Hmm. Oh, sorry, folks, trying to figure out the roof here. Looks like it connects there. <clears throat> I 
I can try to talk and concentrate at the same time. I've gotten a lot better at it doing these live streams. I remember a few years ago, I was trying to do a watercolor live stream and my girlfriend at the time was reading me off questions from the chat and uh, I found it very difficult to read, to answer questions while I was painting at the same time. But now I'm actually, I can read the questions and draw or paint at the same time. So I'm getting a lot better at it actually. So the more you practice something, the better you get at it. Imagine that. The more you practice, the better you get. It's usually how it goes. Just takes time. Everything is patience, you know. It's definitely learning a lot of patience. Every day, it's just being patient. So I'm just suggesting details here. I'm not I'm trying I'm not getting into the details as you guys can see. I mean, it's just very suggestive, but when you pop it back out, boom, looks pretty cool. Pretty good. So definitely, definitely having some fun today with this one, so far. Hope you guys are enjoying it. And it's just, for me, it's a lot of fun. And I hope you guys enjoy watching these. And hopefully you learn something, or at least get motivated to try something new, try something different. You know, I always try to, with these streams, I'm always trying to do something different, you know. Haven't done any portraits yet, of course. That's sort of one thing I haven't gotten into yet, but, uh, yeah, eventually. I think eventually I will, but just taking my time here. Okay, I like this, I like how that pretty good <laughs> well truth freedom I think you do have a point there I guess the world does revolve around truth and freedom that's you actually you got a you got me on there you got me on that now that I think about it <laughs> Give some dimension to the little things there. Nice, nice, looking good. Looking real good. Some tree branches there, tree uh, trunk. Suggest another little line here for this wall. Maybe some suggestion of detail on this wall. Not too much, not too, you know, just something, a little something there. Break up that bottom line a little bit as well. Just suggest uh, some kind of lines there in the foreground. It's pretty nice. I know, man. I know you're just having fun. <laughs> oh, man. It's good. I'm glad you guys are having fun, man. That's what life's all about. Just have some fun. That's what I'm trying to do. 
All right, we got some darkness down here. We'll start putting in some of that a little bit. Underneath this tree as well. And then there's actually some gravestones or headstones, whatever you want to call them, right underneath this tree. It's actually a cemetery right on the side of this, behind this church. Um, it's pretty cool. This is a really cool place. I love this little village in England. It's a great place, man. It's such a cool atmosphere. So quiet in the evenings, no one there. Just walk around the little street, man, and the old old houses there and stuff. It's just really amazing, man. Really cool. I actually filmed a vlog of this whole evening and location. It's in my uh, England and Paris vlogs on a playlist on my channel. And uh, this was just a cool little village. And I did some painting here. I did a painting in this church. Uh, actually, let's take a break look real quick. Let's look at that painting. So check it out. I'll show you guys. This is a plein air sketch I did on location one morning of this church. So really cool. Really cool. There's a bunch of sheep out in the field. Early morning, sun was just coming up. And uh, yeah, boom, there it is from life. So that was a lot of fun. That was a lot of fun to do. Anyway, just like showing you guys some different stuff that I've done. It's always a lot of fun. I'm sure some of you guys have probably seen those videos, but if not, you can check them out if you're into that, if you want to. It's just something something I've done. I like doing like travel vlogging and stuff. I want to do more of it and get better at it. It's really my, it's really the thing I like doing the most is travel vlogging and painting on location, painting outdoors. That's what I wish I could just do for my job. Wish I could just do that as my job. That's what I'm working towards. That's my goal. Just travel a few times a year, three to four times, just see some amazing stuff documented in video format and paint some amazing things, draw some amazing stuff and uh, share it. I'm trying to keep these trees pretty simplified for right now. Not getting too dark with anything overall. I'm getting, I'm filling in the darkest spots, kind of the darkest darks underneath these trees. So I don't know if I want to go really dark on the trees or not. Maybe I'll, I'll have to because they, they kind of contrast against that building. I think the building is going to be the tone of the paper, and these trees will be just a little bit darker. Try to get some darkness in on these trees. Okay, here we go. We a little darkness down here. I didn't draw the longer tree. Yeah, I'm 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 cutting out a lot of the background trees because I want to focus more on the church. I want that to pop out. So I kind of. Uh, Maybe cropped and zoomed in, but another one with no real light source. I'm not sure what you're referencing, Amanda. Uh, I don't know, that's probably something I said a few minutes ago. I don't remember. I've just been rambling. I don't have, don't remember what I'm saying. Art is not my profession now. Um, I mean, it kind of is. I do graphic design for my day job for a healthcare 
management company. We do a lot of different stuff. But um, yeah, that's my day job now. So I, I have owners that I report to. <laughs> and uh, I don't want that to be the case. I want to I want to own my own my own destiny. So that's what I'm working towards. It's really my goal. We'll just shade this one side just a bit. Just give it a little dimension. It's kind of cool. Maybe darken it toward the bottom. Um, probably darken this roof slightly, give some value on the roof. Make it a little uneven because it's like an old roof. And we'll do these a different way. So looking pretty, looking pretty solid now. I think pretty solid. I might add some texture side of this. Not too much. Just want like make it look like stones or something. I don't know. I don't know if that did anything, but either way. just playing around with different textures and stuff. I don't really do a lot of textures normally, but this doesn't have a lot of shading. So just playing around with, trying to play around with different kind of styles of, of things. Just see what, see what I can create here. So we have some dark tree shapes back here. Here's a lighter tree, a little dark underneath there. But this is pretty dark, but I may not want to go super dark back there because I don't want it to compete with this area. So I probably want this to be the darkest spot. These trees to be a little more darker than these other trees. Obviously we do want some kind of contrast to Create some depth or something. But just got to be careful here. Just got to be careful with where the contrast lies, where it's at. What's going on, Philip? I shipped out your painting today. Um, oh, I forgot to, you know, I, I forgot to mark that on my site. Uh, I will do that after the stream. It should, it should email you a uh, tracking code and stuff and all that. I forgot to, I shipped it out. I was, I was so uh, diligent with shipping, packing it up and shipping it out. I forgot to mark it, mark it as shipped through my website inventory. So it didn't notify you yet, but it's true, I shipped it out, so. Should get there to you in no time, you're in the Bay Area, so it probably, they'll probably still take two days just because it's the mail, that's how they do it. But anyway, um, best book for skin tones, color palette? I, I don't know, you don't need a book for skin tones, I mean just observe skin tones and try to mix a color that's closest to that. You could easily get um, the Zorn palette is a great palette for skin tones. So ivory black, cadmium red, and yellow ochre, titanium white. Just by mixing white, cadmium red, and, and yellow ochre, you can get a really great skin tone, and then you can mix a little bit of ivory black into it, graze it down a little bit. It's really a great palette for skin tones. Like, you don't need to read a book for skin tones. Just 
observe from life and mix them and observe from other paintings. Observation, man, that's your study. That's how you figure things out. That's how you study things. Books are definitely helpful. I'm not putting down books, but I don't know a book about skin tones. Um, proportions and angles. Yeah, proportions are definitely, everybody always struggles with proportions. It's just, it just takes time. You just have to t take the time to measure. If you're having trouble doing it with your eye, take the time to measure, learn how to measure comparative measuring. Start looking up videos on comparative measuring and really figuring it out. Um, I've done a few videos on proportions. You can check those out if you search my channel. Or just go to YouTube, type in proportions, Schaefer art. I have like three or four videos on proportions where I explain it in all different ways every time. So definitely check those out. All right, I'm going to put some white down. Uh... Yeah, glad, uh, glad you're using the quarantine to learn how to draw. That's great. That's a good time to do it, I guess, for sure. Well, I think a lot of people are, or were, because I, I ended up, my, uh, <laughs> my monthly subscriber rate tripled during this quarantine. Uh, it's starting to go down again now, back to normal. I mean, it's not, it's still like more than double, but it's starting to decrease now. But... <laughs> The amount of subscribers I'm getting a, a month tripled. So definitely, I think a lot more people during this quarantine started looking up art. Yeah, the problem is people don't, you know, like someone said in the chat, I even buy some ebooks to guide me. I buy the art supplies months ago, but never start. So many people do that. So many people spend all their time looking up all these different supplies to get. They start watching all these different videos on how to do things. The one ingredient that's missing is what I'm doing right now, is applying the knowledge. Hold on one second, folks, my phone's ringing. Hey, my dad's calling me. So Amanda, if you're out there, just text dad, tell him I'm, I'm live. <laughs> uh, I forgot what I was saying. Yeah, the one ingredient is just putting the work in. What I'm doing right now, just focusing on doing the work. You know, putting, getting a workout in every day, every other day, a few times a week. It's just like going to the gym, man. You just got to train. You got to train. How do I get over the embarrassment of making bad art when I first start? Don't show it to anybody. Yeah, I mean, if if you have bad stuff in the very beginning, just don't don't show it to people. I mean, I have a lot of bad art. Just about a few weeks ago, two weeks ago, maybe, maybe three weeks ago, I just went through all my old oil paintings, like small oil paintings. I threw away a whole stack of probably 20 to 30 paintings, just threw them away right in the dumpster. I've just been carrying them around for years, and I realized, like, these paintings just aren't the quality that I want. You know, they're just not something I'm going to sell. They're not ones that I want around uh, for people to see. And they don't, their quality isn't up to par with the rest of my paintings. So I just got rid of them. I just threw them away. And you may not feel like you want to throw stuff away yet, but, or ever feel like that. But just don't show it to anybody. Just keep, keep going and learn from the mistakes you made. Like try, really, the important thing is figuring out why don't you like it. Like, why is it bad? Why are you embarrassed by it? And why is it not good? And then once you figure that out, figure out those reasons, try to correct it in your new drawings or new art that you create. Try not to make those same mistakes. And then that's what's gonna, 
that's how you get better. You have to learn from your mistakes. Just like in life. You know, you put your hand in the fire when you're a little kid. It burns. You learn, you know what? I'm not going to stick my hand in the fire again. And you got to do the same thing with your art, with your drawings. Just be like, you know what? I'm not going to stick my drawings in the fire. I'm not going to do that one thing that I did last time. I'm not going to shade that way or I'm not going to do that thing. Yeah, it just takes time. It just takes time. Patience, practice, determination, stuff like that. Yeah, exactly. You're never going to, it's never going to look perfect. You know, the sky that I'm drawing, it's never going to look perfect. It's just, it's fine that it's kind of splotchy like this. It's not a big deal. Like you're never going to make it perfect. It's better to have something good and finished than perfect and unfinished. You know what I mean? What's that one quote? Uh, perfect is the enemy of good or something like that. Like, or perfect is the enemy of done. I don't know. I can't remember the exact quote, but yeah, just don't worry about get out of the perfectionist mind state and just focus on doing. It's really like everything in life. You got to have you got to have short short term you know someone someone I follow I used to follow sometimes I follow him uh Gary Gary V. He's a business entrepreneur guy. Gary V. And what he says is you got to have micro speed macro patience. So what does that mean? So in the short term, you got to be quick. You got to do a lot of drawings every day. You got to be quick, get a lot of things done day to day, every day. But in the long term, the macro, your whole life, you got to be patient. Because things take time to build, things take time to, to happen. So yeah, just think of it that way, I guess. I probably gave way too much information there. Of your watercolors on your site, which do you think is your best? Who? Um, trying to think of what's on there right now. Probably that first Arc de Triumph one that I done, that I did, or the probably some of the ones that have already sold, unfortunately. Uh, and by the way. Might as well point it out. I do have some watercolors on my site for sale. So probably that Arc de Triumph one right there is pretty good. The mountain one right next to it on either side, those are probably some of my favorites, as well as the top two on the left. So I do have some available on there. There's more if you scroll down on my site, SchaeferFineArt.com. I also have some drawings on there from these live streams for sale. Everything's pretty affordable, really affordable. So definitely check that out if you're interested. And uh, you can find it at SchaeferFineArt.com. Some paintings on there. Actually, these are probably my favorite paintings here at the bottom, these three. Uh, the mountain, that middle one is probably one of my favorites as well. So now you know. So thanks for checking out the art available on my website. I also have some tutorial videos on there as well. I'm going to be adding more to those eventually. I'm just kind of in the infancy of getting some tutorial videos put together, have some in the works. I have a lot of stuff planned, a lot of stuff going on right now. Um, So I'm just trying to make make this sky a little more uniform rather than so streaky. But it's not that big of a deal. I'm going to blend the top of this sky out, I think, a little bit. So what I mean by that is I'm going to start spacing it out a little bit more. 
so that it gradually gets lighter and light or darker and darker because of the mid-tone of the paper. I know this is kind of the boring part of the drawing because I'm just like doing the same thing over and over and over and over. But I'm going to be done here pretty soon with the sky. I think it's looking pretty good for the most part. I can always do add more to it later. But we'll let the edges bleed out a little bit like that. Blend out. So anyway, that's pretty cool. Looks pretty cool. Really getting it to pop. I think if I darken the, the trees a bit more now, um, we'll have something pretty cool. So I'm just going to focus on the contrast being mainly around this main building. darken some of these trees there. There we go. That's That looks really nice, I think. Uh, hello, how's everybody doing? Do you, do you use reflective tools like optical mirrors or are you just eyeballing it? I want to become an artist. You can use those things. I mean, every once in a while I use a mirror, like I, I hold my paintings up in front of a mirror and look at them. Uh, it definitely helps. Sometimes taking a photo with my phone helps. For this drawing, I look on the screen. Um, I can see what I'm drawing on the screen a lot smaller. So it helps me, excuse me, it helps me see the overall photo better or the overall picture of it better. But yeah, like right now with these live streams and stuff, I just kind of eyeball it. Hi from Thailand. That's pretty cool. Thailand's pretty cool. I'd love to go to Thailand one day. I'm sure the weather over there is pretty nice right now. How's how's it going in Thailand? Um, well, you don't. Uh, my struggling is straight. My straight lines are never being straight. Well, a lot of the times I don't have straight lines either. When you look at my drawing. If you really look at like this line here, it's not really like perfectly straight. You know, it's not, a lot of the times you don't want lines to be super straight. Um, kind of want them to have some kind of character. So sometimes the line will disappear and then sometimes it's a little bit thicker at the bottom or thicker at the top. You know, where you'll have it, you know, bleed off like that. Um, You know, there's uh, it's just uh, different ways to create lines and stuff, and you don't always necessarily want them to be like super uh, straight, I guess. Sometimes it is necessary, but a lot of the times it's it's not really. Uh, do does my do my hands get cramps? Uh, no, not yet. The only thing I struggle with is using the computer all day. I even have an economical mouse after I've been using for a few years, and sometimes my right wrist, I have I'm getting really bad carpal tunnel, and I try to stretch it every day. I try to work out. It's not doing. It's doing pretty well right now, but like a month ago. Uh, once this quarantine started and I was working on the computer all day long, uh, my arm, my wrist was not doing very well. But now I'm, I'm doing a lot better. I've been stretching it, been really focused on resting it. And uh, I, I don't really have a problem with drawing or anything or painting with my wrist, luckily. 
So I'm just going to darken this one tree here, and then we'll kind of reassess. We'll see if is there anything else that I, that this kind of needs. Does it need any bits of white maybe on the ground slightly, just to illuminate the you know a little bit more of the more light coming through here or something. So I'm, I'm literally just scribbling here. Like I'm, I'm scribbling like a little kid. There's nothing magical about this. It's just I'm focusing on the lights and darks, the value. That's it. That's the magic behind this. And I'm really ruining this, uh, this pen. I think this paper is kind of rough. It doesn't feel rough, but it must be rough to this, these pens because these pens just get destroyed very quickly. So we'll take a look at this. That looks pretty cool. I like how it fades out towards the edges. I really like that. So we'll kind of keep that look towards the edges. I like that, I like that. I think we darken this grassy area back here just a bit. It's a little too light for my liking. Got some nice headstones right here. That looks kind of cool. It's really subtle detail, but I like it. I'm gonna make this wall a little more prominent, this line. Probably curved a little too much down this way, but there's nothing I can do about it now. It's okay. Uh, let's darken the bottom of this uh, church just a little bit more. Just so it looks like it kind of belongs around this shadowed area. Yes, I do read the messages in the chat. <laughs> no worries. <clears throat> do I use Photoshop in my job or Corel Draw? I use Photoshop, Illustrator, InDesign, Premiere Pro, After Effects, Adobe Audition. Yeah, I use a whole, all that stuff. Um, I do I do animations, video editing, photography, videography, uh, graphic design, flyers, websites, web design, all that stuff. Um, okay, what what else? What else, folks? Is there anything that it needs? Is there any more value or something I need to add somewhere? What are you guys thinking? Is this close to being? Being done, I think I need to get off here and make some dinner here shortly. Getting pretty hungry. Darken the roof a little bit. I like that a little bit better. Uh, really excellent pen and ink today. Thanks, I appreciate it. Love my style of art. Appreciate it. Yeah, I've been using Photoshop for 15 years now. I remember using Photoshop when it was uh, Photoshop 11 or something. <laughs> it was called Photoshop 11 or 12 or something like that. <laughs> uh, 
I like you. I mean, I like your drawing more than the photo. <laughs> Thanks, I appreciate it. Really appreciate it. I'm wondering if I need a little bit of light somewhere. Just a little bit, just a little bit. Like on the ground or something. I don't know, I don't know. It just feels... I mean, it is like the photo. It's very overcast, very subtle values and stuff. Um, some white in the tower. See, that's what I'm afraid of. I don't want to put it on the building because then it, it kind of will blend into the sky a little bit. I don't want to do that. The only thing I can think of adding is just down here on the grass, just to, but I don't know if it's necessary. I don't know if he'll do anything. How much times do you practice? Uh, I practice, these live streams are my practice. It's literally it. I could draw some little sheep in the foreground here. There is there is like one or two, three sheep in the foreground. I don't know. I don't know. Let's just do like s some small lines, just very subtle. Let's just do this. See if that does anything. Just illuminating it a little bit. Maybe more towards the wall. There we go. I think I like that. I like that. A little highlight here on this. I don't know, maybe something on the tower. What can I do? Like, just little accents or something. It's kind of cool. There is something like across this roof. Like I said, I don't want to do too much, just little things here and there. So I don't even know if you guys can see that, but there you go. Just little, little bits, little bits here and there. Yeah, I just practice on these live streams. I mean, this is, this is when I create, this is when I draw every week, every day. I don't really draw any other times uh, recently. So this is my time to practice and you guys get to see the process. So yeah, I think it's pretty cool. This came out really well. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Anyway, folks, I think I'm gonna get off here. Uh, I guess next the next stream, maybe tomorrow, if I feel like it, uh, will be a watercolor. And uh, we'll figure out, uh, I'll try to figure out what I can do for that. Uh, watercolor subject. Any ideas, let me know. Post them in the chat right now. Take some suggestions for the next live stream will be a watercolor. Hope you guys enjoyed this little pen and ink. I think it came out pretty well. Pretty cool. You know, the only thing I can do is kind of strengthen the sky a bit. Just get a little more. white in the sky, a little more solid toward the bottom. And right around the buildings, that way, just a little more contrast right where I want it. And this will give you guys some time to do some suggestions. Um, yeah, do some sheep. We are in lambing season. That's why I can watch some streams on my nightly breaks. Just back from the stable. Help the twin in the world. Very nice trying. Wow, really cool to hear that. I don't know that I'm going to add any sheep, actually, because I probably can't draw them that well, to be honest. And I kind of like how it is now, so I don't want to mess it up. <laughs> I made it this far. I don't want to mess it up right now. Normally, I take some risks in the end, but I don't really feel like taking a risk right now with this one. Snowy mountain scene, okay. Maybe the white in the front wasn't needed. Yeah, it's possible. But I, I, I like it, I think it's cool. Um, everybody has their own opinion, of course. Do you ever try GIMP? No, I have not. I just stick with Photoshop. 
Maybe a seascape watercolor. Okay, so we got snowy mountain scene or a seascape. Okay. I have photos of both of those that I could poss potentially do. I can already see them in my head, so... That's good. Good ideas. I appreciate that, guys. When I'm looking through my photos tomorrow, I'll be sure to keep those in mind because I have a lot of snowy mountain scenes from Alaska that would be really cool. Very challenging, but could be pretty cool. Street scene in the USA. Okay. It's possible. Next pen and ink, a sheep. Okay, yeah, cool. Next pen and ink could be a sheep. All right, yeah, next pen and ink, uh, I'll do a, I'll do an animal. All right, anyway, guys, I think that's pretty much it. I think that really helped, that white at the end. It's kind of cool. Um, really brings it together, I think. I'm, I'm really happy with this one. Only thing I can do is just strengthen some of this, this line work here. Kind of re-establish some of this where the white overlapped it a bit. But uh, other than that, guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for tuning in. And I will see you on the next one. I'm going to get off here, eat some dinner. You guys enjoy your evening as well. And I'll see you on the next one. Peace. Thanks for all the suggestions.